Hi, in this video I will focus on the authentication and authorization implementation for Java microservices. You can see we created a new workshop called Get Started with Security for Java Microservices and I will do that along the workshop material. So let's directly jump into where it happened. When you want to follow all the steps, you have to install these prerequisites or just do the workshop by, your, by yourself. And the link to the workshop is below in the description. So let's start with uh, understand the architecture. What is the sample? We use the Cloud Native Starter example application for the implementation. It has a front-end application, which simply shows articles implemented in VGS. We have two microservices. One microservice is called Web API and <clears throat> provides the access to the article service. So that means we have here front-end to back-end pattern <clears throat> with a single point of entry to the, the back-end services so that we have here Web API, which provides the endpoints for the web app. And our identity and access management system will be Keycloak with um, Open ID Connect. And we will use for the implementation of the Java uh, microservices, Quarkus. Quarkus is optimized for containerized application, especially for Kubernetes. And the, the cool thing is, it is also built on best of breed Java libra uh, libraries and frameworks. And one of the cool frameworks is MicroProfile. We will also use and the combination of uh, Keycloak, which is also uh, compliant for OpenID Connect, and Quarkus and um, MicroProfile. We have not a lot to uh, implement related to authorization and authentication. Um, <clears throat> let's see how it works. Let me take a look here at that GIF. You can see we just log on and we see the articles. What happens when we uh, invoke the web front end, it will directly route us to a um, login dialog provided by the Keycloak server. And here we do the authentication. And if the authentication was successful, we directly get a valid access token to access the microservice for the authorization to get the articles information. So that's all, and then we will display that. Good. Let's uh, just copy here the, uh, not co uh, copy the command, and we clone the project to our local PC. I open up a um, terminal session in my Visual Studio code. So, Sometimes it takes a little bit more time, and then maybe I have to speed up the video here. Yeah, cool, done. And now we will set up Keycloak. A little bit about Keycloak. You can see the, there is a RAM. RAM is the project inside Keycloak. And here we have the configuration. Our RAM is called Quarkus, as you have seen in the, the GIF. And we have a user called Alice, the, and the role called user. And with that role information, we are allowed to authorize ourselves, if you are a valid user, to get the articles information. And with the information that we are the client front end, we are re directly redirected of the successful authorization to our application, just you can see here. So the project uh, configured the RAM uh, con uh, contains a lot of more configuration information, but uh, you will see these later. So let us start first here the container locally in our terminal session. When the 
kick log server is started, we can log on and that URL yeah, with um, user admin and password admin. So now you can see here, I'm going to the administration console. Okay. Cool. So that's the front end of Keycloak. These are the RAM settings. You can see here the uh, token information, client configuration, uh, clients here. That's the master RAM. And now we add our own RAM, our own configuration here. That's our. The cool thing is you can uh, export the RAM configuration in the JSON format and just import it. Yeah, and so you do not have to uh, take care about all the configuration we did before. You can just use it here. As uh, you remember, here is the role user. Yeah, that's the role we use. Here we have the different users. One is called Alice. And uh, here is the, the client configuration. And here you can see that's the redirect URL and about uh, web origins is that we have no course problem. Good. Now our key clock is running. And what is next? We will set up our web application. Therefore, we go to the project. And as you can see here, our Cloud Native Startup project is, is not a small project. So sometimes it takes a little bit of time to, down, uh, to, to clone, but it's also related on uh, yeah, my settings with the um, webcam and so on, recording. It takes a little bit longer than usual. And um, yeah, here is the security part, and you can see we have also reactive, and there are some golden nuggets you have, uh, you not you have, you can inspect by yourself if you want to. Okay, <clears throat> so uh, I said we want to go to the web app, yeah, and see how the main GS is implemented and what you have to do here. So what we have to do, we have to insert here the right URL. Don't forget yeah, what I did here to remove the, the S, the HTTP. So if you do it locally, because we also uh, have an example running on Kubernetes in, in that workshop. And so here we use HTTPS and that's, that's different. Okay, uh, with that configuration, we use a store inside the VGS, and here we have the login or the, the URL for our key clock, and this is the uh, URL for our web API microservice. So uh, you can see here we commit that change and we will load the login endpoint information with the init options here. Uh, with the RAM, front end, and so on. And then here we will uh, use or utilize the SDK for Kiko for, for JavaScript in that case. And when the application is loaded, yeah, it happens that uh, we will be redirected to, to Kiko uh, for the authentication. Okay, so let's let I start that web application. I open a new integrated terminal. Oh, not forget to, to save it. <clears throat> and you can see here, we have to build or use the package manager yarn here so that we have the configure for the execution, you can see, and then we will run it. Yeah. So,
will be directly redirected now to Keycloak. Now we log on as Alice. So we are logged on as Alice. And um, for sure, we will get no articles as long no uh, as long our both microservices do not running. Yeah, so that's works ex ex expected. So <clears throat> now we will set up and configure our web API. Um, to run the example, we only have to over here. I open up a new terminal session ahead. Uh, close that. You only have to uh, configure for Quarkus the URL with the open, uh, where, where is the OpenID Connect provider? Uh, we use for the identity and access management Quarkus here, and that's the URL. So, uh, local host and not get remove the s. So when you can see here that's the URL, you have the, the client ID, the how to get the credential secret, here's the port, course, and here that's a very cool thing because uh, with that we are allowed if we get an access token in a header, we can forward that and reuse it. And that, that's the cool stuff. Uh, so when we invoke in the next step the articles microservice, so we do not have to authorize or authenticate ourselves once again. So that, that's the cool thing we can do and just take a look here the articles resource here you can see with the articles resource um, how the endpoint is implemented and how is it protected we just use here uh, roles allowed and that's the <laughs> all we have to do with the annotation yeah um, for sure if we say roles allowed uh, you do not have to double check the uh, authentication. If you verify a role, you, know, you should be already authenticated. And that is how we can uh, access this here. Yeah, uh, that this role is allowed. And with the uh, JSON web token easily, so that we can extract information if we want to. Okay, yeah, cool. Um, the next is that we want to execute that microservice. So, and when the microservice starts, I will show you <clears throat> that we do not have to insert additional information about the header here when we invoke, as you can see here, here we invoke the articles microservice. And as you can see that we have not to add additional parameters for the authentication in the header. So we can just use the basic REST client builder, which is provided by MicroProfile. Yeah. And we can invoke the articles mi microservice <clears throat> and get the articles from that service. So um, that's cool. On um, the web API microservice. And now we take a look inside the articles microservice. So we open a new terminal because we will later uh, start it here. 
So <clears throat> web API we done. And now we go to the resource. Oh, more or less the same way with the configuration of the URL. localhost oh. so and here is a the needed configuration so that with that uh, role based security uh, is true that we can extract also the, the, the role information from um, our authorization header and this is all done <laughs> by <laughs> Uh, Quarkus in combination with micro profile and key cloak. So you can see we have only this configuration and stuff. And uh, when we do secure <coughs> our yeah, our microservice, it's the same as it was before. Yeah, we can see here roads allowed. And that's <laughs> that's all what we are doing when we Secure it on on that level. Here we will start the next microservice, and then the microservice is started. So let us verify what happens when we here. Uh, maybe it takes a little bit. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Isn't it cool? <laughs> yeah. Check it out by yourself. Makes fun. It's not a lot to do. Dig into Key Cloak. Yeah. And you have authorization and authentication there. And there are some, uh, some additional topics inside um, the documentation. You can uh, dig into that topics by yourself when you go to the material. Yeah, get your hands dirty, try it out, especially the section here where you can directly do on your local PC without any cloud instantiations and so on. Yeah, have fun with that, check it out, and let's see what's next. Bye. <laughs>